Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here, and we're going to do a short video here on the art of the quick turn. So, what is a quick turn? First of all, we need to understand that what constitutes a quick turn varies from airline to airline. For example, Southwest Airlines has been known to do turns that are 15 minutes. So what that means is they arrive at the airport from the time that they pull up to the gate and open the doors, they will turn do a 15 minute turnaround so they've got the fuel truck already pumping fuel they offload the passengers which takes uh, anywhere from five to ten minutes and then they onload the next group of passengers and the way that they load passengers Southwest Airlines has a has a rather unique way of loading passengers you basically have a group that you fall under and they you know group A B C and D you load group A and everybody just goes on and picks a seat there's no assigned seats so it does make loading a little bit faster so five maybe eight minutes for loading the passengers by then the fuel's done they close the doors they push back the aircraft and off they go um, usually their turns take a little bit longer but that's you know it's about 15 to 20 minute turnaround time for them so we can actually do a turn a little bit faster here in FSX because we don't actually have to worry about passenger loading and all that um, and when we're using our PMDG NGX here, we can load the fuel straight from the aircraft and so on. So all of that being said, we have just arrived at RJCC. And what we're going to do is a quick turn here. Our next flight is from RJCC to RJTT. So there's a few things we need to do. First of all, when we landed, as soon as we came off of the runway, I went ahead and turned on the APU. So you can see the APU is already running here and that is where we're drawing our power from we're not using ground power on this one we are going to need fuel and our next flight it requires approximately 10,000 pounds of fuel so for PMDG we can click on the menu FS actions fuel and then we just type 10,000 pounds just like that and there we go and because the APU is running it's already starting to burn fuel which means we need to get rocking and rolling so real quick here just want to show you this is my get on over there that didn't work quite how I wanted uh, let's put it right there I like that so this is uh, my flight plan right here uh, we are uh, sky 730 here's the basic information fuel information I know it says 9823 I always add just a touch of extra fuel there especially when I'm using the APU here's our ATC route it's already been put into um, a cars I'll show you that here in just a second and then some information on our alternate planning we're not going to go through all of this I just wanted to show you real quick I do have a flight plan and this is what we're going off of so we've already taken a look at all this information in preparation for our quick turn all of that being said we've got our fuel in the aircraft now so let's take a look at our a cars there it is right there you can see I've already got a cars set up so once I landed parked my aircraft I had the AP running, but the engines were off, the parking brake was set, I ended the flight, filed the PIREP, and then fired up Sky 730. She's ready to go. We've already set up the flight, as you can see, and I've already pressed the Start Flight button, so we're in the boarding mode right now, so we're good on that as well. Click Menu, go back over to FMC, because we don't need anything else in there for now. Let's close that down, and let's go ahead and get our flight plan loaded. So if we click on the Route button, now keep in mind, we don't need to align our IRS, we don't need to fire up our APU, we don't need to do anything except load our route at this point, which makes this much quicker. Clip, click, click on company route, and we are at RJCC to RJTT. Click on that one, as you can tell, I've already planned the route in advance and saved it in there. Click execute, there she is, ready to rock and roll. What do we say, Sky 730? So flight 730. Put that in there, activate it, and bam, we have our magenta line. Go to our performance initialization page. Our cruise altitude is going to be 40,000 feet, so put 400, and that will put in flight level 400 for us. We don't need to do calculate gross weight or zero fuel weight with the PMDG. We can just double click that one, and it puts them both in there for us. We want 2,000 pounds of reserves because that gives us just about 45 minutes. And our cost index for this airline is 85. And if you're curious about any of this information, please see my ground operations for the PMDG FMC. I'll try to remember to put a link down below, but you can also find it on my channel. Execute that information, go to our N1 limit. We're going to leave it all right there on the normal takeoff. And then click over to our takeoff page, and we're going to be taking off with flaps 10. And 
we're going to want our center of gravity here since we've already put our fuel in we don't need to calculate this either we just click this twice one two it puts in our center of gravity and tells us what our trim should be set at so if we just hold the mouse over here right now our trim is at 7.48 so we'll roll that mouse wheel forward until we get down around 4.62 and i don't know if you can see the little uh the little help uh, tool there or whatever you want to call it where it says elevator trim 4.95 there's 4.69 which is pretty close uh, my old recorder wouldn't show that but I think this one does so there you go you can see it and that's helpful to uh, find it now we're going to want our V speeds in here and the easiest way to do that is to choose our departure and our departure today based on the wind is going to be runway 19 right and we're going to be taking the chi for departure and we'll explain all of those here in just a minute. So we'll execute that, click back over to the route page, takeoff page, and now we have our V speeds. So we just click one time next to each one, and there's our V speeds. And if we wanted to alter those, we could by simply typing a number down here and then clicking the line select key next to the V speed we want to change. Last thing we want to do here is check our legs page, make sure we don't have any of these route discontinuities. So I'm going to brief. Uh, I'm going to brief the departure here. Uh, as we start to taxi out and you will see uh, that we don't need this route discontinuity here so we'll just click the line select key next to Toby, Toby, however you want to say it it puts that down here in the scratch pad and then click the line select key next to the empty boxes and that will connect them and we're good to go give it a second it calculates your altitude speeds all of that good stuff and uh, again uh, this is not an FMC tutorial so I'm not going to sit here and go through all this information but I do want to check our climb make sure that we're at 250 or below as far as speed when we're at or below 10,000 feet we're good to go there back to the legs page we're good there hop over here take a quick look at our this is our progress page we just want to make sure that right now it's calculating our fuel as being higher than our reserves which it is so we're good to go there last thing we want to do uh, Normally we can do this while we're pushing back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push back. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, at this particular airport, GSX is not working. Um, not sure why that is. We'll look into that another time. So we're just going to do a straight push back. Not that big of a deal. Uh, as soon as I release the parking brake here, you will see the little announcement from ACARS saying that all passengers have boarded. There it is, passenger loading completed, and ACARS is now tracking our flight. So let's go ahead and push back. Simple shift P in this case. Aircraft starts pushing back. Well, while it's doing that, we're going to go ahead and start one engine here. But first, I always, this is just the order I tend to do it in. Maybe not all the time. But let's just scroll this up to 40,000 real quick. There we go, 40,000. This is not a startup tutorial either, so I don't want to hear it. That needs to go there. That needs to go. Nope, wrong way. Here, let's hop over here so we can see it clearly. That needs to be off. That needs to be there. That needs to be off. And we're good to go so we can start the right engine there. There she go. As I'm waiting for her to spin up, I'll usually come up here. Sometimes I do this before pushback as well. Scroll that up to 250. Auto throttle arm, flight directors both off and then back on. We'll turn those on in just a second. Once we're above 25 on our N2, which we are now, we can go ahead and add fuel. That'll fire up the engine. Now we can turn on the flight directors. And our MCP is ready to go. Now there's a couple things I didn't turn off on the overhead. Um, they're, they're not a requirement to turn off, but you can if you wanted to. You can turn the yaw damper back off. You can turn off the probe heats like that. And these two would come off here as well. We're going to roll that to 40,000. That's going to be for our cabin pressurization. And right now we're just waiting for that engine to finish firing up. Make sure seatbelt signs are on. Let the flight attendants know we're pushing back here. And I know I'm going through all this real quick because this is not a tutorial about startup and all of that stuff. We've pushed back far enough. Shift P. And let's put our parking brake on. This is just about the quick turn itself. So all of these procedures and stuff, these are in other tutorials. Uh, you need to know them in order to do a quick turn. All right, engine two is started, so let's go ahead and click over on engine one here. Notice that our beacon light is already on before we started our engines. Taxi light is on. Normally it would be off. I just forgot to turn it off, so we'll leave it on. It's no big deal. Looking for 25 or higher on here. If you can't see it, pop it up there. There it is, 21, 22, 
23 and so on once it goes past 25 right there introduce fuel into the system excellent that engine starts firing up there flight controls that's our yaw damper in case you're wondering so we can bring yaw damper back on now probe heats both of our hydraulic pumps in the center can come on at this point and we're going to wait for engine 2 to finish firing up and stabilizing before we reintroduce air conditioning and whatnot into the system. If you're in a hurry you can press B, the B Bravo key to quickly set your barometric pressure. I went ahead and did that real quick because the idea of this video is to be a quick one which is not something I'm very good at. So. <laughs> Uh, looks like we're good to go. We're pretty much stabilized on engine uh, number one there. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and turn the air conditioning back on. That one goes there. Auto. These are all auto. And if you want, you can turn off the APU bleed at this point as well, which we have done there. Another attendant call. Let's send everything back over to the APU by clicking each of these switches here. And now we can turn the APU off. Oops, that was the start. There we go. Turn it off. And it'll cool down now. Hopefully. Doesn't seem to be coming off, does it? On, off. There we go. Took a second. Maybe it's because I accidentally hit start first. Uh, just for your information, I've spoken with a 737-800 pilot. I won't say which airline, but he is a training captain, so he knows the aircraft very well. And he has informed me that the procedures that we're following here, these are, in fact, the proper procedures. So that just means PMDD did a stellar job on this. Alrighty then, let's take a quick look at where we're at on the airport and make sure that we know where we're going as far as taxiing is concerned. We're not using ATC, however, uh, we'll make the assumption that we got certain information from ATC. So let's take a look real quick. So what we're looking at here is basically our terminal chart. All of the terminals are located generally in the same vicinity of the airport. So we have this zoomed in view, if you will. And you can see you've got your international terminal here, domestic terminal here, uh, north and south apron. This is uh, JSDF is Japan Self-Defense Force. This is your cargo area over here. And there's you know some other information on here uh, regarding the gates, their locations, and so on, uh, for example. Uh, this gives you gates 18 and 19. Uh, we're at gate 18, by the way, uh, here at the domestic terminal. So if we needed our coordinates for gate 18, here's our uh, our lat long coordinates. So there's other information. You've got ATIS on here, tower, ground, and stuff like that. So clearance delivery and so on. So normally uh, you would pull up this airport chart basically for ensuring you know where you're going when you're taxiing, especially if you're not familiar with the airport. And there's there's actually two charts for this airport, and I'll show you the other one here in a second. But because we're taking runway 19 right, we could just use this chart for uh, our for our taxi instructions. So if we were using ATC, we would get instructions something along the lines of taxi to and hold short of runway 19 right via Juliet, which is this taxiway here. Hotel 4 which is right here. They might include Hotel 4 and then Hotel, which would be this taxiway, and then Alpha 2. Uh, or they might just say Taxi and taxi 2 and hold short of run runway 19 right via Juliet Hotel 4 Alpha 2, which would just take us straight across here. And we could use this chart to do that. We could also use this chart. Uh, we know that we're located at uh, gate 18 right about here at the domestic terminal and this does tell us still that this is the domestic terminal, there's the international terminal. This just doesn't show which gate is which. So if we took a, it, let's just say we were taking runway 1 left, I apologize for that little pop-up, runway 1 left the, and uh, we, we received taxi instructions, something along the li lines of taxi 2 and hold short of runway 1 left via Tango 1. Juliet, Hotel 7, Delta, uh, and then what is this down here? All the way down, uh, let's say Alpha 10, right? So if we weren't familiar with this uh, with this particular airport, then we could look on uh, this, this map here, or this chart. It's not a map, but it's a chart. And we would know that Tango 1 is right here. So when we push back, we'd pull forward to Tango 1. This is Juliet right here. And Hotel 7 is this uh, exit right here which is at the end 
and then we know that uh, Delta is the first taxiway we come to. We taxi all the way down, and then Alpha 10 is the last uh, last turnoff on that taxiway. And then we'd hold shorter runway one left there. So that's basically uh, you know what you use these airport charts for these uh, airport area charts. And this dotted line here, this shows you uh, what the other chart that we were just looking at covers. So that's your basic uh, you know that's your basic charts for being able to get around the airport uh, these these particular charts are the Lido charts that I get from uh, excuse me that I get from Navigraph um, keeping in mind that if you use like airnav.com uh, which is a fantastic uh, site you can pull up these charts but they're only for US airports so we're here in Japan uh, just doing a quick turn and we want to know where we're going so we would use those two charts to determine where we're at on the airport and how to get where we're going luckily for us we're taking runway 19 right because that's what the winds telling us today so that's what we're gonna take all right now that we uh, understand where it is we need to go to taxi and a quick look at those uh, airport charts let's go ahead and start taxiing out and as we're taxiing out here we can uh, do the approach briefing so let's do that sounds like fun all right so as we make our short taxi over here to runway 19 right well, let's take a quick look at our uh, departure chart our SID chart we're going to take the G4 departure right here and uh, you can see that there are several departures on the same chart. You've got the Tech 09, HWE 6, uh, what is that, Ufutsu 4, and so on and so forth. So all of those different approaches would be found on this same chart right here. So from one runway, one night, I cannot talk. Runway, a one niner left or right. These are all the different SIDs you would take. As I said, we're taking the G4 SID because we're going to be departing pretty much directly to the south here. So as we come off of runway 19er, we'll make a slight right turn. Okay, the runway is 182 degrees. We'll make a slight right turn direct to Chi, which is this VOR right here. And then that's that's it. We're not doing a transition anywhere else. We could do a transition. Uh, Actually, Toby 8 is a completely different departure, and we're not taking that one. We're taking the Chi departure direct to the Chi uh, VOR, and then direct on course from there. So we're not going to have to worry about altitude restrictions and so on. But I have mentioned those in the past, and so I just want to mention real quick, there's a couple different things on this particular chart that we haven't talked about before when it comes to altitudes. For the Toby 8 departure, uh, from between Chi and Toby, uh, this right here, uh, this this uh, little graphic right here, my brain is not functioning properly. This little graphic right here is telling us that between Chi and Toby, we must remain at or below 11,000 feet. You notice that the line is above it, at or below 11,000 feet. This altitude up here, if we were taking this departure, we must be at or above 5,000 feet when we are 13 miles from MKE which is out here so at this point right here we must be at or above 5,000 feet we don't have to worry about any of these altitude restrictions but there is one other on here that we've never mentioned before you see here that we've got 11,000 and 9,000 with a line on both sides now if it was just 11,000 and it had a line on the top and the bottom that would mean we need to be at 11,000 feet when we cross this point right here which is 22 miles from Chi. However, when it says 11,000 and 9,000 with a line on both sides, that means we must be between 9,000 and 11,000 feet when we cross this waypoint here. And that's what that's what it means when you have two lines and two different altitudes. And you can see we have the same thing over here. So that's that's it. That's our SID right there. We're uh, pulling up to the runway now. So let's do our final checks and let's get this bird in the air. All right then, our generic takeoff list here, if you will, because I don't actually have a uh, checklist in front of me. We've got our MCP set. Now, we don't have any altitude restrictions, so we already set it for 40,000 feet or flight level 400. 
Altimeter is set and it is 2980. Uh, MCP is, is complete. Uh, airspeed is set to 250. Auto throttle is on. Flight directors are both on. Flaps are not down yet though, so we want to make sure we go to flaps 10, which should be that one right there. Down there. There we go. Flaps 10. Let's make sure our landing lights are on before we pull out on the runway. And everything else is as it should be. We are good to go. So let's go ahead and pull out here on the runway and let's get this flight underway, shall we? Flaps will be all the way in by the time we get onto the runway. Usually I would turn those on a little sooner, but I guess I just had a couple other things on my mind. So we're really light, so it doesn't take much thrust. So we're going to get to uh, rotate speed really quickly here. So let's just go ahead and go right into a rolling takeoff. Try to anyway without making too much of a mockery of it. The throttle's up beyond 50%. Engage the auto throttle mode. And away we go. Let's listen for our V speed callouts. Rotate speed. We're already at V2. Pull gently back on the stick and start our climb. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. We've got plenty of power, so let's keep this bad boy climbing. We're not going to bring any flaps up quite yet. Gear up. And as you can see, based on our flight director, let's go ahead and bring the flaps up one. There's our first flaps mode coming up. And you can see we're going to make a gentle right turn here, direct to Chi. That's what uh, we see right here on our nav display. So we're not starting that turn quite yet, but we will be here soon. And there's our decel mode. Let's go ahead and bring the nose down just a little bit, line it up with that flight director there. That's the pink uh, horizontal cross. Keep those flaps coming up as we're gaining speed. Start making this right turn. Flight director's not telling us to go there yet. Not sure why. Probably because it's a vector mode when you first start out. Flaps can come all the way up now. And then to simplify it, we can go VNAV, LNAV, and engage our autopilot. There it is. Autopilot's taken over. We're going to fly direct to Chi. And as soon as we hit Chi, then we will continue on course. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the art of the quick turn. We are back in the air, and I'm uh, not sure how long this video was. Probably took a little bit longer with me recording a video, but when it's all said and done, you can do a quick turn pretty fast. So if you're going to put together a series of flights one day and you want to knock them out as quick as you can, especially short flights. i got four or five uh, basically hour and a half long flights today. I'm going to try and get them all in. So I'm going to be doing quick turns all day. The key is, first of all, if you're a fan of... Uh, proper livery like I am then you want to make sure that all the flights are with the same airline and of course having all the flights in the same aircraft is important as well so that's going to do it for this little quickie here ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate to put them down below and please give us a thumbs up if you liked it and as always I do ask that you subscribe to my channel if you have an opportunity you know what make an opportunity subscribe to my channel ladies and gentlemen I appreciate it I had a good time we're pushing out over the ocean here and off we go so i will see you all later have a fantastic day